What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Spin Fuels Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and today we're going to be talking about battery safety. So a vape magazine approached me and asked me to do a quick article all about battery safety because I've been doing the building classes and battery safety courses at the VCC events recently. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to read it right off the website and I will have all the information in this video in the description below if you want to check it out for yourselves there. Uh, so let's begin. So uh, there are literally millions of vapors nowadays and a lot of who are trying out the art of building their own coils and or using sub-ohm tanks. There are a few things that everyone should know before they delve into the realm of rebuilding and sub-ohming. Battery safety and Ohm's law are on the top of that list. The following will be a step-by-step -step guide on the do's and don'ts of the subculture of vaping. So, battery safety. It may seem like common sense to use the right tool for the job for a beginner. There's so much information available to you it might seem a bit overwhelming. Hopefully these tips will get you on the right track for being a responsible advent or for being a responsible advanced personal vaporizer or mod owner. Uh, so first things first, never fully discharge or over overcharge your batteries. When charging, keep an eye on your batteries and make sure uh, you take them off the charger when they say they are fully charged. Most of the time it's at 4.2 volts. Most modern chargers are equipped with overcharge protection, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't, should just leave them on until they're ready to use. Batteries slowly drain even when they're not being used in a mod, so if you leave them on, they will continuously be cycling even though they still read 4.2 volts. Also make sure you take out your batteries before they hit their lowest charge rate. Most of the time it's 3.5 volts. The lowest I would ever go is 3.2 volts. You should notice a significant loss of power when using a mechanical mech mod when the batteries are starting to drain. When this happens, take it out and swap it for a fully charged cell. Never leave your batteries on the charger overnight. This can cause the battery to have a reduced life cycle and any chance to extend the life of your batteries is one you should take into consideration. Not to mention the fact that lithium ion batteries are very fragile so you should always be cautious when using them and keep an eye on the charging process. Furthermore, make sure you, your charger is in a safe place and out of the reach of children and never on the carpet. Buy the right battery for the job. Buying batteries can be a pain with so many different brands to choose from. First of all, when something has the word fire in the name, it's best not to trust it. If you're using a regulated device that goes up to 15 watts and is not capable of sub-ohming, you should most likely use an AWIMR protected cell battery. There are several sizes to choose from, including 18350, 18400-500, and 18650, among others. Make sure you purchase the correct battery size for your device and never stack batteries. If you're using a mech mod and you, you will need an unprotected high drain cell such as a Samsung uh, 25R Smurfs or the Sony VTC4s. These batteries are capable of putting out a much higher amperage than protected cells and if you are using it in a sub-ohm coil you will, also using, you will be also using a higher than average amp draw from your, from your battery. Don't short out your batteries. A uh, short circuit is like a, sh a shortcut that electric electricity can take on its way from the positive or uh, negative terminals. This can, be cause, this can be caused when your positive and negative terminal touch the battery at the same time, causing, uh, such as using a hybrid connection with a device with a shallow, po shallow positive pin, but a short can also be caused by a number of other factors as well. One thing to stay away from is storing batteries with other metal objects. This means don't just throw your batteries in your pocket with your keys and loose change as it can short out your battery and even explode. The telltale sign of a short is uh, your battery and mod will get very hot. Don't risk your using a battery that you shorten, shorted out. A $15 battery is definitely not worth, worth risking your hand over. Always check your battery wrappers for rips. This is a common problem that is all too often overlooked. I've seen countless cu customers come into my vape shop that have tears in their battery wrappers and think it's not a big deal, but they are definitely wrong. Even if it's a minor tear, you should always rewrap it because if it's left untreated, it could get larger or possible, possibly short your battery and cause you to get shocked. Battery rewraps are cheap and easy to do. Simple, simply peel the old wrapper off your battery, slide the new one over it, trim if necessary, and heat it using a hair dryer. Presto, you're ready to start vaping once again. Finally, know the amp limit of your batteries. 
Uh, I also have a table that is available in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, basically, know the amp limits of your batteries, know the uh, pulse charge, and also continuous discharge of your batteries. Uh, for example, the Sony's have a maximum output discharge of 30 amps, and the lowest possible safe build on those Sony batteries is 0.3 ohms. So err on the side of caution. Always use the proper battery for the job. Never ever ever use protected cell batteries in a mech mod, obviously. Um, so finally for my last topic tonight it's going to be Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is the relationship between three mathematical equations relating to the flow of electricity. It may be difficult for those of you who don't have a pre-existing knowledge of electricity so I'll try to make it easy for you and relate it to a highway. What is voltage? Voltage could be like a huge superhighway with lots of cars speeding down it. The speed at which the cars can travel is determined by their own top speed and how many lanes are in the highway. The difference between the speed at which the cars are traveling and the car's maximum speed could be thought of as potential voltage. What is current? The best analogy for current would be the fastest speed the cars can travel as determined by their own top speed, voltage. The quantity, volume, and intensity of electrical flow would be best described uh, would best describe current as opposed to voltage, which refers to the force or top speed causing the current flow. What is resistance? Resistance is like a bottleneck where four lanes get reduced down to two, and the traffic is forced to slow down. The more lanes, lower resistance. The faster traffic can uh, can go, and the fewer number of lanes, higher resistance. The slower it can go. The coils you build are the resistance in the case of vaping. All three of these factors play a crucial part in Ohm's law. Ohm's law could be stated as mathematical uh, as mathematical equations, all derived from the same principle. Uh, so I have also I'll put up a graphic right about here. If you can't see it, there you go. All right. So I'll put up this little graphic here, which basically gives you the math mathematical equations in a nutshell. I'll also have that information in the description below if you need it. Uh, so knowing any two of the values of a circuit, one can determine, calculate the third uh, using Ohm's law. For example, when building coils, you will have to know the maximum uh, voltage output for 4.2 on most batteries and your resistance in ohms. So when you plug the, those two factors into the equation, you can determine how many amps you, you will be drawing from your battery. This information is crucial because you don't want uh, to be going over the amp limits of your batteries. There are helpful tools out there to help you with this, including websites and even apps that you can plug in the known factors to determine the amps you're drawing from your batteries. Always use an ohm reader or multimeter when rebuilding so that you know the resistance of your coils and have the number you can plug into the, these formulas. So in conclusion, at this point you should have a solid knowledge base of the safety aspect of vaping and hopefully have gained some knowledge on how batteries work as well. The information that I really want to uh, you all to take away from this is how important safety is when it comes to rebuilding your own coils. I see far too often people using unsafe batteries or making coils that would make an electrician cringe. The more accidents we have as vapors, the more the media will show bad press and push for more regulations. Vape safe everyone, and as always, vape on.